Welcome. My name is uh, Stefan Winterke and it's my great privilege to welcome to Europe PCR 2024 in my role as editor of the PCR EAPCI textbook on interventional cardiovascular medicine. Now today we are discussing a newly updated chapter on coronary artery stents and in this context it's my great pleasure to welcome Miklos Rola who has been the lead author for this important chapter. Now Miklos, uh, Tell us, why is this chapter so important? Uh, when has it been updated uh, from the previous version? And who were the co-authors of this chapter? So the last update was in 2018, six years ago. A lot of things happened uh, since then. And together with uh, Scott Garg, Raffaele Piccolo, Charmaine Tiruna Bukarasu, and Patrick Serois, I think uh, we put together an updated chapter that contains preclinical data, clinical data with up-to-date randomized evidence and in-depth technical specifications of all the currently available drug eluting stents. I think making this a great chapter for interventional cardiologists and everyone who wants to engage in that profession in the future. So an eminent group of authors uh, that really assembled a new up-to-date uh, version. But uh, let's start at the very basics. Uh, why are coronary artery stents so important for everyday clinical practice? So originally stents were developed to tackle the issue of abrupt vessel closure, which mainly arose from uh, unsealed dissection after plain old balloon angioplasty. Bare metal stents were great in doing that, but restenosis rates in, let's say, a third of patients prompted further advancement in this technology. And our current generation devices are absolutely excellent in safety and efficacy. Uh, so far that the restenosis rates drop below 5% per year and stent thrombosis is a very rare occurrence occurring less than 1% per year. So stents uh, are used in more than 90% of uh, cases in PCI interventions uh, today and they're really high-tech innovative uh, devices. Can you tell us a little bit about the principle uh, and the main elements of modern uh, drug eluting stent? So the three main components. There's the metallic frame, the metallic backbone, which today consists of cobalt chromium or platinum chromium alloys, which have better properties than stainless steel, which was used before. The second component is the polymer, which serves to contain and release the anti-proliferative substance. And lastly, the anti-proliferative substance itself. And maybe um, at the end, uh, your most important take-home message for uh, readers. Uh, what is the take-home message you would like uh, to take uh, the listeners to take away from this? Um, we have become extremely good in designing these little high-tech devices, as you referred to, that it becomes very hard, actually, to provide a device that is superior. There are new approaches, for example, stands that in addition to eluting a limus agent, elute anticoagulants, has been presented yesterday, a very exciting device that eludes two anticoagulants, for example, rivaroxaban and agatroban. And um, to leverage this excellent technology that has some kind of a plateau in terms of safety and efficacy, I think we have to use intracoronary imaging guide guidance and also modern antiplatelet strategies to really provide the optimum that can be provided at this time. Well, thank you so much uh, to you and the authors uh, to really update uh, this very important uh, chapter. And as you indicated, it's, it's, not, it's not just the device, but the clinical context and the use together with modern intracoronary imaging and inject, inject antithrombotic uh, treatment. We really hope that you will uh, take advantage of this new updated version of the uh, chapter and look forward to any feedback you may have. Thank you. Thank you.